بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم اتیه الله اتیه رسول و من الانبه بیوکم من دوز من دفر مرسف انا عبدك العجیز و دعیف و مسکین و زال و جهل but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence and we took a path into the oceans of nothingness and that Allah's rahmah and mercy to dress us and the greatest gift that Allah Zawajjal give is to direct us to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the Muhammad inshaAllah. Do you have any questions from the night before that we didn't finish or where should we talk about? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Uh Sayyidi, what is the reality of the silver or steel bracelet that you wear? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> What's the reality of the silver bracelet that I'm wearing? Nothing, alhamdulillah. A gift, so alhamdulillah. And silver has a healing element that's within it, so alhamdulillah. But Nothing to, to to go too much into inshaAllah. Uh, As-salamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. How often should we be doing the tafakkur? Every day how often should we be doing tafakkur inshaAllah? Every day and as much as possible that we practice and train ourselves at least every day, few minutes after each prayer, connecting our heart, seeing ourselves at the Kaaba. Seeing yourself in Medina to Munawwara and asking your hearts and to be connected, to be dressed by the lights and the blessings. And then once we begin to develop that connection then to do that at every moment. As soon as we want to pray we make our connection, ask for our mother for support and ask for the presence of Allah that take us to the presence of the companions, presence of Ahlul Bayt, taking us to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that leads us to the Divinely Presence. So to always pray, always do our zikr in, in, in the madad and it comes to the understanding of the ocean of nothingness. That I don't want to pray myself, I don't want to do the zikr of my zikr, I don't want to do the actions of myself. I took a path in which to be nothing. So when training to negate ourselves to be nothing and nothing then everything that we're doing we quickly go into that ocean of nothingness that I'm nothing and I'm a weak servant, an ignorant servant, Ya Rabbi and dress me from the dress of my shaykhs and then from their dress all the way up the chain to the presence of the holy companions, the presence of Ahlul Bayt and to the Holy Presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So the more that we can keep that the more powerful every action will be and that has to be the key to understanding. When people are not getting that and they think that they're going to achieve something on their own or through themselves that becomes a difficulty because nothing of any reality opens. Because the only treasure is Sayyidina Muhammad The only reality is the reality that is deposited within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And I don't have a treasure, I don't have a reality. So if I want to reach to that reality I have to take a path of nothingness. And so that's in every aspect and every reality that is, is trying to be reached. So we want to reach to the reality of salah. It's not that I'm going to pray and the prayer is going to be directed deeper and deeper into the Divine reality but to achieve a state of nothingness in which I pray within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad 
and Prophet is praying to Allah and that becomes the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah So those are the oceans that we're trying to achieve, the, the ocean in which to take myself out of the formula to witness this Divine reality and Divine grace that Allah is sending upon the soul and the reality of Prophet inshaAllah. And that's in everything that we do in our zikr, our prayers, our meditation and I don't think people quite get it because the, the questions that come in about do this or do that and but when we really think about is that am I, am I vanishing, am I taking a path of being nothing, I'm asking for the light to come. So without the light of the shaykh and the madad of the support of the shaykhs then how am I going to achieve any of that reality? So it's not about me achieving something but the greatest achievement is my ocean into nothingness in which to annihilate myself and ask for the support and the light that the shaykh is reflecting and then from that light through the lights of the awliya, lights of the shaykhs all the way to the light and into the presence of the holy companions, Ahlul Bayt and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that once it's really understood, the depth of it is really understood then everything is possible, everything is achieve, achievable. Every barakah and blessing is uh, reflecting. If not then the servant thinks that they have to achieve something and that, oh this way is too hard and I'm never going to achieve. No, we only have to polish. So all we have to do is clean to the zikr that they gave us and keep cleaning by saying, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And as soon as we sit to do our tafakkur then that reality begins to dress us and bless us like a satellite. It said that when we look at the moon and now the nights of the full moon, those were all the teachings that the moon is our, is our guide and the moon is a symbol of the guidance of awliyaullah. And the moon is teaching us that don't ever lose your coordinates, that your life is to follow the light of Sayyidina Muhammad And the only way that you can be of benefit to people is if you are bombarded and emptied. For if the moon ever pretends to be a light and send an artificial light, it loses all of its blessings. So when you stare at the full moon and the immensity of the light that it's reflecting, that is the sunlight and that's the majestic lights of the sun that nobody can look into. And by looking at the moon you're reflecting, taking the reflection of that light and a very holy light, the holy reality, the lights of eternity and that's the symbol of the guidance in our salawats and, and all these knots that we're recing, reciting of the full moons and qamarun. So everything Allah has given to us, so whatever the shaykhs are teaching, do you see it in the horizon? If you do then Allah, Allah has already provided for the dalil. So Allah said, this is how I created my creation, why you don't follow the same symbol? The moon follows the sun. It doesn't go left, doesn't go right, it takes the course of the sun and the moon has nothing. The moon is not beautiful like the earth with mountains and oceans and birds and creatures. The moon has been bombarded and has just holes and craters that it took such a, a beating and such a difficult existence that moon that all it has is just the signs of its difficulty. So with what reality Allah allows the sunlight to reflect to the earth, that our eyes pick it up and what power Allah gave to our eyes to pick up that moonlight. So that's the immensity and the immense secret. Again the sun is shining, nobody sees it shine but the moon does. And the moon is, is, is such a perfect mirror of the reality that it sees the sun shining upon it 
and it reflects it to the inhabitants of earth because that's its khidmat, that's its Divinely service. Because of its purity it reflects a, a very pure immense light upon the earth. As a result of that service all of creation is, is living because of those lights. So the creation is existing upon this earth by Allah yes but that's too simple. Allah doesn't like when you don't study and don't, don't take examples from His creation. Otherwise He says that, do you think that this creation was like a joke or a play, something that you think is to be funny and, and playful? That Allah made this as an as a entertainment but Allah made this creation for us to sit and ponder the creation. But look at the light and say, SubhanAllah Ya Rabbi what kind of power you put into that sun that never turns off and I can't be in existence without it. There'll be no breath, there'll be no light, there'll be no nothing growing, nothing of, of, of warmth. Everything is provided by that light, that I'm in need of that light. And then Allah begin to expand the heart, say, now you understood the sun. Imagine who represents that sun on this earth. If we understood then if you're in need of that sun, imagine that the sun in the nut that we recite, the sun takes its light from Sayyidina Muhammad When the, in the nut it says, the sun and the moon take from your green dome. Hmm. So if you're in need of that sun to live on this earth, and that sun is coming from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Then imagine the greatness of what Allah has put, that we're in need of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad That we breathe and eat and drink from that light that Allah has put into that reality. And that the highest path is the path of the moon and the tariqs and they say, where are the tariqs? The tariqs are the moons, the path of the moons. That they teach the inhabitants of earth is take a life of testing and keep testing and testing and anytime you try to turn yourself on Allah send you a test to turn yourself off so that you can reflect that sunlight to its perfection. And as a result humanity benefits from you and they don't have to thank you, they don't have to do anything. They're, they're indebted to you because of that light that you reflect, the sunlight doesn't come and ask us for anything but we are indebted to that light. You know if there's no sunlight nothing grows and if there's no moonlight nothing grows. These are the station of the prophetic station is for the sun is Nahar and the awliya station and the saintly station and the reality of the moon which is a nur. One is a source of light the sun. And one is the reflection of the light, the moon. The qamarun, qamarun nurun wa shamsun diyarun or nar is a fire, it's a source that bringing out this eternal reality. So our life is like that moon and take the paths of the moon, take the path of difficulty and all of the, the difficulties that come in life that this is the month of Qurban and the tajalli from last night and the immense blessings of, of last night that Allah and Prophet accepted the Qurbans and the actions and the lights and, and all of its blessings inshaAllah and that was the tajallis and the lights and, and the heart that fills with tears from their presence and from their nazar. That as soon as the nazar of Prophet begins to dress the association then the souls they're overwhelmed by that light and by that blessing. So that, that was a holy night last night because of the, uh, the ending of Eid and the commissioning of the qurbans and distribution of the qurbans so has the immense blessing, many difficulties lifted, many gifts. And, and blessings granted to the souls and many prayers of Sayyidina Muhammad and prayers of Ahlul Bayt, prayers of the holy companions, prayers of awliyaullah fi samai wa fil ard for all those whom are supporting, doing, striving, 
whatever they can do to elevate their status, their consciousness, their purity. It, it's held in very high esteem within the heavens for those who are trying to lift themselves from the dirtiness of this dunya. So alhamdulillah that those are immense blessings and immense dressings. So this life is, is and this month is a month of qurban. So that's why these testing and, and this reality of testing, everyone who agitates and aggravates and every difficulty that we have in life, it's not that you, you resolve the difficulty but you live through them. So emails come that this happening, that happening, the, 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 the spouse is fighting, this one screaming, yelling. It's not a place it's that you can find a sense of there won't be any more problems and what can I recite so problems go away. He says, then look up at the moon and, and see how much difficulty the moon has endured for it to be at a station in which it so perfectly reflects the sunlight. Because Allah just said, you're not a own creation, you know, you're not the one suffering in this world by yourself. This life is about the difficulties, how you endure through the difficulty and if you endure correctly, you become a reflection of light in life and that's what's important. Not to get the difficulty to go away and that it never comes and like you know, go away, go away and never come back except on another rainy day. Difficulty is always at the door and it becomes a companion for the one on the path. It's how to survive it with good character that's important. Because as soon as Allah sends these crashings, immense lights are emitting from the soul. So imagine now in sun, when we understand, wow the majestic power of that sun, the majestic beauty of the moon and those are imitations, those are maqams. Imagine insan whom Allah created from his own hands and breathed from his spirit within their soul. What type of light of Divinely love is flowing from their hearts but nobody can see. That's why we gave the example of the sun when we were talking about the Shamsi wal Do you see the sunlight, how it's immense fire is coming? And then all of a sudden in space it's black. So it means nobody can see the light of the sun with what type of rays and emissions and, and frequencies are being emitted from the sun. When the sun has solar explosions, its radiation is going out through the entire galaxy. All throughout the 11 planets are all being affected by the radiation, ga gamma radiation, gamma rays, electromagnetic all these frequencies of energy the sun is sending out. Imagine in sun when they have this love for the Divinely Presence, that their hearts more powerful than that reality. What type of emanations are emanating from their hearts? And that becomes the majestic beauty that when Allah says, if I light your heart, your heart becomes more powerful than the sun. And if you take your testing, take your testing, take your testing, your head will become like a moon in which it reflects all the realities of your heart and your face shine throughout the 11 planets of this galaxy. The light of awliyaullah is not limited to this earth. If the sun can send the light out to these planets, imagine the power of the soul. So when the light that emanates from the heart and the potential that insan can reach from their heart and the light that emanates from their face because it's a reflection of their heart and the majestic light, the majestic love that has immense, immense realities. So this qurban is not something small that Allah to take the qurban, take the imperfections and in its exchange to give us from His Divinely pleasures and Divinely blessings upon our soul and upon our reality, upon our family and upon our communities inshaAllah. Um, Sayyidi, if we are new, do we need to get permission from the shaykh to do meditation and connection with him? 
If we're new, do we need to get permission from the shaykh to do the meditation and to do the connection? Well, it's best that when you're new to email helpme at nurmuhammad.com so that you can get the instructions because the meditation is not something that's easy and it's not something that's known and it's not something that's written anywhere. Unless you're reading from our books and the, the books and the website online nurmuhammad.com. So it's best to email first so that we can send the email for instructions and then begin to give the guidance on how to make your connection and how to visualize and how to begin to do the awrah and the breathing. So alhamdulillah it needs a ijazah and, and an introduction and that's why then the, the importance of the email. And anything you learn from, from this site and these teachings not allowed to ask from anyone else. Don't assume that if you eat at your uncle's house your other uncle knows anything about what you've been doing. I mean just because you think that the tariqah is one family it's not every shaykh is, is, is given every understanding of everything. So it means each shaykh has his own reality in which Allah has given to them. So the adab is that what you learn from this channel, from these realities, from these websites, not to ask it from anyone else. You have a question, come back to help me at nurmuhammad.com because you start asking, they don't know the answer, they start throwing out different uh, responses and you're going to be badly confused. And shaykhs don't like when somebody asks them questions about other shaykhs. If you would ask Shaykh Mawlana Shaykh Hisham a question, he'll give you an answer. If you didn't like that answer and you went to Shaykh Nazim, he would give you a much more severe answer and he would have negated that answer and give you a different answer and you would have left completely confused because they don't like it. They don't like people who bounce around and ask different things. Once you get guidance, you have to remain at that source getting the guidance for that information. If you have information on something else, that's something else. But that's very important because with the internet and everybody texting, messaging, emailing and trying to you know commute with other people, this teaching is specific to this channel, to these books and to this teacher inshaAllah. As Salaamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Does our name on this earth count towards our seven soul names? Does our name on this earth count towards the seven names? It can and cannot depending upon whether your parents were inspired. If the parents were not of an inspired nature then no those are not your seven names. But if your parents were inspired and they, their actions, their piety or that they were amongst the awliya, then alhamdulillah maybe you're fortunate and have one of those names. But it, it's not an assumption that just the name you have that you entered onto this earth is one of the seven names that Allah has written for the servant. And that's why it's important to be in the company of, of the shaykhs and to learn how to make your connection because the connection is really about how you're going to know yourself. It's a path of getting to know myself, I have to connect my heart with the shaykh, connect my heart with the light and get to know myself, what is my reality Ya Rabbi, what did you create me for? And once the meditations begin the understanding of knowing himself will know his Lord. As a result of beginning to know himself, you begin to understand the lights and the dressing in which Allah has dressed upon his reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As As it is said that angels and anbiya were created from the drops of Muhammadan light, do awliya also have some special affiliation with Nabi Kareem that the angels and the prophets were created from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad and do only Allah have a relationship with the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Everything is created from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Rabbul Mu'mineen wa Rabbul Kafireen 
is Rabbil Alameen means that everything is from Muhammadun Rasulullah and Allah created everything in haqq, everything by truth means that truth is the prophetic reality. Allah's haqq is a proof, that proof is called Muhammadun Rasulullah the trees, the light, the angels, the Kaaba, the heavens, Bayt al Mahmur, the Arsh, the throne of the Divinely Presence is created from Muhammadun Rasulullah. That's why only Allah are teaching you if everything in heaven is created from Prophet's light, why Allah wants to sit on it? And this, this is created from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad. Then who's going to sit on it is Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah sits upon his heart because Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known means the izzah and the might of Allah dresses the soul and the heart of Prophet But that light in the Muhammadan light is the light that all creation is coming out from that light. So then the one whom their light is asking for blessings and dressings then the lights are making a mirage within the reality of Prophet That to take your Muhammadan light and the responsibility to clean it, to purify it, to do the dhikr upon that then you understand that's why all of our teaching is you don't necessarily owe Allah istighfar, we owe Sayyidina Muhammad a forgiveness. That with this light that you have given to me, this opportunity, this love, this birth you have given to me of existence, I owe my forgiveness to you for what I have done wrong with it, where I came short with it and where I didn't purify it like you wanted me to purify it and to keep it pure. And then that light is making a mirage into the heart and to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why the teaching is the Mawlid is the most important opening of that reality. When you celebrate the birth, you're celebrating the birth of your reality. So as soon as we do the Mawlid on Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, why we say Milad and Nabi is because for those whom are coming, Ya Rabbi we're asking that you give the birth and the reality of the birth of the Muhammadan light within us who we don't know where we're from. Make that light to shine, to come into its, its real reality, to give its power, its majesty. And that's why salawats are so powerful and salawats are so, so important for our energy. And the salawat is the dhikr of Allah That's why, in Allahi wa malaikatahu yusalloon ala nabi. Allah's dhikr is salli ala nabi, is the salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad so anyone who wants to do dhikr like Allah does dhikr then make salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. So Is it your maqrab sign? Yep. InshaAllah Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon, Salaamun Al Mursaleen, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Amin, Bi Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa wa Bi Siri Surat Al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.